Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and in this video, I'm gonna dig more deeply into argumentation. How do we support claims with evidence and reasoning? You're probably familiar with CER as a mechanism and how we can get our evidence up on the wall so we can have some kind of an argument. I'll talk more specifically about analyzing and interpreting data and communicating information as two practices that can help us construct a valid argument. Remember, this video is part of a series of videos I'm doing on scientific inquiry, and I'll put a link to that and resources down below. But whenever you're doing arguments, it's important to delineate between an explanation and an argument. An explanation is really explaining how the world works. And lots of times when I'll talk about this in class, I'll refer to this as your explanatory model, how we explain the cause and mechanism of effects over time. When we're doing argumentation, we're really doing the nuts and bolts of how do you know what you know? And so that's gathering evidence to support claims. And a lot of the time, those claims are gonna be somewhat in doubt. I did a video on explanation, and I'll put a link to that video down below. But if you're trying to figure out what does an argument look like, you should think about what does a scientist do every day? What does a scientist look like? And you might think a scientist looks like this with a lab coat and discovering something new every day, but they actually look like teachers most of the time. They're spending a lot of time on the email. They're spending a lot of time in lab meetings. Eventually they come up with some ideas and they'll attend one of these. It's a poster symposium, or maybe they're gonna give a talk. If we look at this uh, scientific poster, each poster is gonna have the following. It's gonna have a claim with evidence and reasoning. But we might think it goes in that order and it doesn't. The first thing you always do is you gather the evidence and see what the evidence shows you. Lots of times you'll add, have evidence that doesn't end up on the poster because it didn't lead anywhere. I was working in a biofilms lab for a whole summer on bacteria that were just mislabeled in the lab. So a lot of that evidence doesn't show up. But once you've got enough evidence, then you can eventually make a claim with reasoning. Sometimes teachers and students will confuse claim with a hypothesis. It's not what you think. It's what the evidence says. It's what story the evidence tells you. And we want our students doing that. We want the evidence that they're gathering to be up on the wall so other people can see that and we can have a dialogue about what they're thinking. If we look at the, the sequence of teaching this, it's really important that your kids understand the evidence comes first. And then that reasoning is really, the reasoning is simply connecting your claim logically to the evidence that you have. This is a graphic organizer that I use when I'm doing argumentation. It's really showing how you know what you know. I've got a teacher version where it shows you like things that I would include on that. But if I were going to step through, and let's say you're doing argumentation for the first time, the first thing I would do is cover up this, the claim and the reasoning. I would cover up those two boxes, showing kids that we want to do first is we want to gather that evidence and then see what story that evidence tells. Start with some kind of a simple question. You should probably give them the question to get started and start with a question where we're going to have some kind of an answer at the end. So how many bones and muscles are in the human hand system? You could look at your hand right now and try to determine how many bones or muscles are in there. Now they could quickly Google that and they'd learn just arbitrary information, but it wouldn't teach them anything about doing argumentation. The first thing I would have you do when you're ever doing argumentation is underline the terms and define operationally the terms that you're going to use in your argumentation. That'll become really important, especially when you get to reasoning and students will struggle with reasoning. So maybe we say as a class that bones are going to be hard objects inside the body that support. And maybe a muscle is gonna be softer objects that move the bones around. And maybe we'll define a system as a group of interacting objects. Once we have that, then you as a teacher let them go. You maybe give them an indication that evidence is what you see, it's what you're sensing or what you're observing, not necessarily seeing. And that evidence could be qualitative or quantitative, but then you just let them go and they're gonna gather that evidence. This is a picture of some elementary teachers doing this argumentation on the hand, trying to figure out what's on the inside. Once they've gathered all that evidence, then they make a claim, which is essentially an answer to the question, and then they're gonna come up with reasoning. So you're gonna link the claim to the evidence itself. Now, when you're doing that reasoning, you're gonna use these become, because statements from the evidence and tying it to those definitions. This is where those definitions become really important. Um, if we look at some of the posters, these people think there are 29 bones and 16 muscles in the hand, whereas these people think it's 44 and 48, and these people think it's 24 and 19. Now we can get these posters up on the wall, we can look at how they gathered the evidence, and we can start to improve the argumentation that we have. Now, one of the gold standards on doing argumentation is the argument-driven inquiry. They've got a website. They've got some really good peer review sheets that you could go through and look at other people's argumentation. But we then, once we get 
um, feedback from other students or the teacher, then we want them to have a chance to gather more evidence and construct a better investigation or a better argumentation over time. Now, if we look at the parts of a rubric on a good argumentation, lots of times you're not doing it in the lab. Lots of times in biology or earth science, you're going to have to go gather evidence that's already been collected. And therefore, the analyzing and interpreting practice is also important. We need to obtain that information. Is this information or is this evidence valid? And then we got to start to see what are the patterns inside data sets and between data sets. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. Let's say you were trying to do the following uh, ar argumentation. Is Pluto a planet or should it be a dwarf planet? This is actually an argument that's going on in astronomy at this point. And so first thing we would want to do is obviously define those terms of planet and dwarf planet. And then we could start to do research. Where are you going to get the evidence and, and how are you going to use that evidence to construct an argument? So maybe we were familiar with these different things like Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Pluto, but we've never heard of these other things. And so we want to start looking at patterns in the evidence. What patterns do we see, for example, in their distance from the sun and their diameter and the natural satellites, other qualitative information? So we should be digging into the evidence. We should be looking for patterns in the evidence and then see how could we eventually use that to construct a valid argument. So after we've constructed an argument, what do we do next? Then we communicate that information. So the quintessential way to do that is through a lab write-up, but it could also be through a mini poster. Uh, uh, similar to the scientific argumentation that we see in scientists. Or it could be a formal lab write-up, or it could be as simple as kids recording videos of what they learned in the science experiment. And so this is engaging in argumentation. It's claim evidence reasoning. Remember, that's just the product. It's not the process. We should always start with the evidence, and these other practices are helpful there. Uh, but I hope that was helpful.